Welcome to our show, A Willing Spirit. I'm Dr. Mary Amore, and I'm the Executive Director of Mays Lake Ministries, a nonprofit Catholic ministry located in Chicago. Our mission at Mays Lake Ministries is to engage Catholics in a modern world. We do this through spiritual direction, retreats, parish missions, adult faith formation programs, books, DVDs, and television. We are honored to partner with Shalom World in bringing you this inspirational program, A Willing Spirit. Today's episode is dealing with conflict. St. James tells us, Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but you do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. This reading from the letter of James speaks to the heart of today's believer because in reality, our one holy Catholic and apostolic church is splintered into various groups of passionate members who are willing to wage spiritual warfare on anyone who disagrees or even challenges their particular code of belief or worship practices. There are those who label themselves as liberals or conservatives or traditionalists and claim to be the one who possesses the total and true knowledge of God, enforcing rules and regulations and condemning anyone who does not fit within the box that they call religion. Where is the wisdom from above? Where is the Holy Spirit in all of this? Aren't we all members of the Catholic faith? All members of the body of Christ? Why then the divisions? Didn't Jesus pray that we would all be one? St. James warns us that people who covet their religion oftentimes do not possess the love of God, for they condemn others who they deem unworthy while passionately professing their faith with those who share the same vision. Is this the church that Christ died for? Social media offers us a prime example of what St. James is speaking about today. For there are hundreds of Catholic Christian groups on social media that are filled with what I would call haters, members who will slay you with hateful words if you attempt to even engage them in an honest conversation about faith. Some are militant and fearful of anyone who seeks to understand the mystery of God outside the realm of their vision. On social media, there are people who will respond to a person's inquiry of faith by quoting canon law or a papal encyclical as a means of passionately proving that they are the ones who are right. By driving home the letter of the law, these individuals leave no room for the love and mercy of Jesus to bring people together. In their quest to proselytize the Catholic faith, these members fail to see the wounded presence of Jesus Christ standing in front of them. Rather than offering love and respect to another person, they choose to go on the offense and shamelessly ridicule, ridicule others. They let their passions for self-righteousness destroy another human being. Is this what Jesus calls us to do? I have to tell you that, you know, with Mays Lake Ministries, I'm on Facebook all the time. And so every now and then I'm cruising along on Facebook and, you know, I came across this group that seemed to be, you know, focused on Jesus. So I joined the group. And, um, you know, I'd follow along with their conversations, their postings and stuff. And then one time I had a question about something someone had posted, and I was asking for clarification. Well, let me tell you, um, I never received so many 
um, comments and aggressive acts of hatred toward me. It went on for days. Finally, my husband said, just take yourself off of that Facebook page um, because it was like they were, their whole goal was to prove themselves right. And Jesus and the message of the gospel got lost in that. And I think that's what St. James is talking about. While all of this online bullying and aggression seems pretty disturbing, and it was, it is nothing new in our faith. For 2,000 years ago, Jesus encountered haters in his ministry and in his mission to proclaim the kingdom of God. Jesus ran into opposition from those in the Jewish religion who experienced his preaching as radical. After all, who is he but the son of a carpenter? Jesus drew severe criticism from those who saw his message of mercy and repentance as a challenge to the status quo. After all, Jesus ate with saints and sinners alike. He cured on the Sabbath. He was impure. Day after day, the scribes and Pharisees tried desperately to entrap Jesus, but he would have no part of it. Jesus would not engage with them in their passionate attempts to prove him a blasphemer. The conflicts that Jesus encountered from his own members of his Jewish faith eventually took him to the cross. Is this what we want to do to other members of the living body of Christ? Are we willing to crucify those who differ in opinion from us? In all this conflict and division within our faith, where is the wisdom from above, which is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits. This letter of St. James challenges us, you and me, to reflect upon the way that we treat those who might be faltering in their faith, those who might have a different opinion than us, those who are seeking. Jesus showed us a perfect example of how to treat those who don't agree with us, those who wage war against our very person, for as Jesus hung on the cross, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Our responsibility as baptized followers of Jesus is to live in this world with the merciful and compassionate heart of our Lord, taking his message to heart, forgiving 70 times 70, sowing seeds of peace and justice amongst the weeds, caring for widows and orphans, our role as disciples of Jesus is to let others see the Lord through us, through our compassionate words and grace-filled actions. Throughout the New Testament, we see time and time again that Jesus treated people with respect. He met them where they were, and he gently led all those who thirsted for God to the font of living waters. The Samaritan woman, the centurion, the woman caught in adultery, the man born blind. Our church today is filled with centurions and individuals blinded by self-righteousness and a myriad of people in between. Is it any wonder that there is jealousy and disorder? Aren't we all sinners? Who among us is worthy to cast the first stone? Jesus died for our sins so that we might be one with the Father in heaven. How will we ever restore peace to the world if we cannot restore peace within our own church, within our own parish, within our own family? I knew of a mom, a single mom, that wanted to um, sign up her daughter for catechism for first grade and this woman um, was filling out the papers and everything and since she was divorced she went back to her maiden name and her daughter had the name of the father. And so the secretary called her up and she said, you know, I've been looking at your application and I see that the daughter's name is different than yours. And so the mother explained it and, and the parish secretary said, well, you know, I'm sorry. This would not be a good fit for our parish. Who are we to judge? In his December 22nd address to the Roman Curia and Church at Large, Pope Francis stressed that the avenue to peace in this world is a vital 
personal, authentic, and solid relationship with Christ. When this personal relationship with Jesus is present in our spiritual life, Pope Francis says that this will strengthen our communion with others because we are more closely united to God the more closely we are united amongst ourselves since the spirit of God unites and the spirit of evil divides. Our relationship, my brothers and sisters, with Jesus challenges us to put aside our jealousy and self-ambition, our hatred and anger and revenge toward one another, seeking only wisdom from above. The wisdom of Jesus invites us to offer mercy, not judgment, to offer love and forgiveness. And this is not an easy task because our human sinful nature see seeks to be right, which can create disorder in our lives. For example, when someone hurts us, perhaps we want to seek revenge so that they can feel the same pain that they inflicted on me. Where is Jesus in all of this thinking? As followers of Christ, we are called to offer to others the fruit of love and righteousness, sown in peace and won through the victory of the cross. You know, I go to a lot of parishes giving talks and stuff, and one time I was driving down the street and there was a little country church. And on the side of the road, it had a sign that said, bless your enemies after all you created them. Think about that. We have the power to build up walls of isolation, to say who's in and out of our circle of friends, our circle of faith. And yet it is only through our relationship with Jesus that we can gain the strength to tear down those walls of isolation and to bear the good fruit of peace and reconciliation. God's mercy and love is to offer to all those who hurt us. The seeds of hatred and conflict are so easily sown into the hearts of people. And these seeds of division are fueled by our need to be right or by our need to lord it over others who are different than us. This is not how we are to treat one another. Pope Francis has a wonderful suggestion for all of us as followers of Jesus. He invites us to pray for the people we are alienated from, to seek the good of those who oppose us. So I invite you to stop for a minute and call to mind those people in your life that you are in conflict with right now. Maybe it's your cranky neighbor or a family member that drives you absolutely crazy. Maybe it's a coworker who annoys you or a person or group on social media that really antagonizes you. Maybe it's someone you need to mend fences with or a family member who has walked away from their faith and now no one talks to them. I invite you to give this person over to the Lord in prayer. Pray right now for their well-being. Pray for the grace of healing. Don't pray for you to be right and for them to be wrong. For St. James tells us that these prayers will not be answered. God is in charge. Trust him. Seek his grace and blessings. Pray for the courage and grace to bring the loving and compassionate presence of Jesus to all those who seek his mercy and healing. Going forward, I invite you to seek God's wisdom wherever you are in a situation that requires debate or heated conversation so that the Holy Spirit may first begin to mend differences. Let us work together to sow seeds of peace and love in a world that clamors for war and violence. Let us be willing to let others see the virtues of Jesus within us, his ability to forgive, to offer mercy and compassion so that all people can come to know Jesus Christ through us and not necessarily through a textbook. As the old saying goes, we may be the only Bible that someone ever reads. My friends, let us be willing to be peacemakers in our church and in our families, our workplaces, and in the world. Let us strive to create a world where God's love and mercy are experienced each and every day through us. It's a daunting task. Are you willing to accept your mission? Remember, you are not alone in your efforts. 
The Lord is with you always. To close out our time together today, I would like to offer you a guided meditation. I invite you to imagine that you are walking in a beautiful forest. Tall, majestic trees stand reaching to the heavens. The air is cool and crisp. Shafts of sunlight filter through the trees, illuminating the path before you. Listen to the birds that are chirping, and the air is filled with a beautiful melody. As you look up to the sky, you see the mighty hand of God in the crimson and golden leaves that decorate the trees as they stand in silence guarding your walkway. You feel so at peace in this tranquil forest as if God was walking with you and leading you. As you near the bend in the road, you see a metal bench up ahead and you think to yourself, I will sit and relax in this beautiful setting. I will give thanks to God for the gift of this beautiful day that is filled with his peace and tranquility. As you approach the bench, you notice that there are two people sitting there. You hesitate for a second, but then you recognize one of them immediately. It is Jesus, and your heart is filled with unspeakable joy. You are in awe that you are finally in his divine presence. Jesus reaches out his hand and gently clasps your hand in his. His gentle eyes look intently at you and you are filled with love. Jesus bids you to sit down next to him. As you go to take a seat, you notice the other person on the bench. It is the one who hurt you years ago, the one who betrayed you, and your first inclination is to pull back from Jesus but his hand holds tight to yours, and he invites you once again to sit down. This time, Jesus moves over and invites you to sit in the middle, to take a seat between Jesus and this person from your past. What will you do? Will you ignore the invitation of Jesus to forgive another? Will you continue to allow disorder to fill your soul Or will you follow the wisdom from above, which is peace, gentleness, mercy, and forgiveness? What is your spirit willing to do? Jesus said, go out to the whole world and announce the good news. And that's what Shalom is doing. Is bringing the good news of the Holy Spirit in action, renewing the face of the earth so that all people may know how good is the Lord, how beautiful is the work of salvation. Thank you, Shalom, for all you do to reach out, to lead the faith forward. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Shalom World, God's own channel.